right guard. 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 This next one is brace, brace and dip and then lunge, which means you drop one foot, you drop the other foot, and then you lunge into the block. It's almost like hopping, only you drop one foot at a time. Let's see this center here. Let's see what he does here. Okay. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Let's watch his footwork. All right. Okay. See how he drops his left foot? He drops his right foot to lower his center of gravity, boom, boom, and he lunges into the block. Uh, you know, obviously hard to get movement on any big nose guard. Let's watch this center right here. Uh, both feet will drop, but not simultaneously. Okay, there's a brace with his right foot, a brace with his left foot, and then uh, whatever. Okay, so let's see if we can get some guards, okay? All right, so this would be the right guard. Watch this. This will sell you on it. You won't believe this. I'll run this back a hundred times. This is a right guard versus Woolfork, okay, who was a great big guy with the uh, Patriots, and then he went to Houston. Watch the right guard on a one-on-one -on -one block, okay? All right, here we go. It takes a little time with this. I got to run this thing a little fast forward. Okay, here we go. All right, watch his, watch his right foot, okay? Brace, brace, lunge, gorilla in the zoo, drive, 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 pancake. What do you think? Brace, brace, lunge, pancake. This is called jab, pop, and dip to lunge into the block. Now, what the jab means is like you're most of the time used on the backside. You jab the inside foot laterally. It may drop a little bit. It's not a pure brace, okay? I would rather have him brace the inside foot. But anyway, he jabs the left foot. He steps forward or pops with his right foot. Then he dips. Okay, let's see this right here. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, let's watch jab, pop, and then dip into the block, get a shot. I don't like this as much as, now the backer's behind, so you can do this, but if the backer was in the A gap, I would more move laterally. But anyway, that's a good example of, all right, here's like a, close-up end zone shot of that. All right. Here we go. All right.
right? All right, I'm, I'm having a little trouble here. Okay. All right. Jab pop. Okay. Watch him here. Okay. Jab pop. Okay. There's a fullback trap asked by Adam Bry, I think. Uh, B-R-Y-I-E. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look here now. All right. Give them to the fullback. They're like faking a double team on the three technique, so he fights out. Okay. Let's look at it. Okay. Let's go to another place. All right. 01.50. Okay. Let's see here. Here's a guy right behind the quarterback. Okay, with a jet action. So they're really influencing that three technique like they're going to double team them. Okay, those are a couple traps. Here's why I'd rather use my outside hand versus a guy that's head up with me, outside of me, inside of me. Watch this guy. He uses his inside hand, whether he steps up with his post foot or steps lateral. Watch how they knock it down. Okay, see the knockdown to the inside hand? particularly when the center's going the other way. And he actually steps forward to get closer to the guy, like he's jumping. I hate using the inside hand. It's particularly when the guy's in a shade. Now look at this. <clears throat> this guy's in a tight two, almost a one. This guy really tries to land that inside hand quickly, but look at how he gets it knocked down. And when you get it knocked down, there's a free space right to the quarterback. If he used the outside hand, he would drop the post. The inside hand would be low, and he could drop the post and move laterally to his inside without getting his inside hand knocked down. If he jumps back outside, so what? You recover and block him. Here's nine plays whamming the three technique from the outside in. Okay, let's go, because I got a lot of them. All right, here we go. Uh, okay. Here's the best way to knock the guard's outside hand down. <clears throat> the defensive guy uses his inside hand to the guard's outside hand. That's why when you use your outside hand, you've got to be proactive. You've got to foot fire and go forward or uh, up kick or foot fire and up kick. You've got to get that outside hand on him before he gets his 
inside hand on you. Watch the knockdowns when the guard is not proactive. Here we go. Okay. Watch the right guard. See, the defender uses his outside, his inside hand to the guard's outside hand because that's the closest hand for a defensive guy to use. Okay. All right, there it is again. Inside hand knocking the outside. But you notice the outside hand isn't proactive. It isn't pillaring now. It isn't now. Okay. There it is. Now, knocking the outside hand down with the inside hand of the defender. This again. There it is. Oh, the guard's outside hand gets knocked down by the defender's inside hand. He's not proactive. He's not jumping him. He's not lengthening the outside punch. This is how proactive the outside hand has to be. <clears throat> I would foot fire laterally first, but get the outside hand up right now. Watch this 66. He gets his hand on that guy before the guy even knocks it down and he makes him redirect himself. Now, what I'd rather do is move over laterally, then up kick. Use the same hand action, but step forward with the foot. Okay, here's the same kid again. Look how fast that hand is there. Look. Plus his arms are pretty long too. Okay. If your arms aren't long, you got to foot fire laterally and then go forward. Okay. Move laterally a step or two and then go forward into the guy. All right. Using the outside hand. Okay. If you use the inside hand and the outside hand, you're not long. Remember, one arm is longer than two. Right guard. Left guard. Left guard. Left guard. Left guard.
right guard. This is brace and dip. Let's look at some centers. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, let's look at the center here. Okay. All right, see how his left foot drops and his right foot just dips into the ground. Okay. All right, let's watch one more center. Okay, 62 Eagles. Okay, drops. It's hard to see, but his right foot doesn't even move. It just dips. It lowers its center of gravity. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's look at some right guards. Let's see what we can get here. Okay. All right. It just took me a little time to get it going. All right. Let's look at the right guard here. All right. Okay. See the right guard? Just drop his right foot and then kind of lunge, okay? I'm going to have to stop soon so the video doesn't get too long, okay? Watch this right guard right here now, okay? He just braces and he dips the right knee. See the right knee dip? Okay. Let's watch another guard. Same guy. Brace and dip. This is on a double team, okay? All right. Let's see if we got another right guard. Okay, this is probably the right guard here, okay? See, the right foot just kind of drives down, okay? Let's see if we can get a tackle, okay, without going too long. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here, here we go. All right, let's go back on that one. Watch the left tackle here, okay? See how he just drops his right foot right there, and then he dips. Okay, this one is hopping with both feet at the same time hopping backwards while you're lunging forward. Let's watch the right guard here, okay? Here we go. All right, let's go, all right? Watch 66, okay? Watch his feet now. They spread. You can say the feet spread. Some guys will hop a little deeper, all right? But he doesn't take a lead step. Now it's on a double team, and he gets a pancake, okay? So let's see what we got going next. Watch this right guard here. He kind of moves inside, kind of foot fires or whatever you want to call it. You know, he takes like a little peepee -pee step inside, but then... As he strikes, watch both feet go backwards. He lowers the center of gravity. Now, these aren't, don't all have to be on double teams, okay? So, uh, uh, let's see what we got. Uh, okay, let's watch this right guard here from Washington, okay? All right. All right. Now, this is on a double team, but they don't have to be on double teams, Okay. I think this is just on a straight block, right guard, okay? It's his own block. Here comes the center with him. Look at his feet hop, okay? All right. Let's see if we can get some centers hopping. All right. All right, here we go. All right, start from the beginning, all right? All right. Here we go. Let's watch this Pittsburgh center, okay? All right, he's on the goal line. Both feet hop back. Watch, boom, boom, boom. Let's watch this guy right here. Cleveland center. Watch his feet, okay. 
Last one, number 62. Do your guys finish like this? See that last shove? You coach that? Boom. Here's three snaps of a center using an up kick, stepping forward or at least parallel, not using the old kick slide where they give a soft shoulder. Okay, watch this guy right here. This is a great center from Louisville. He's stepping forward. Watch how proactive his left hand is. And yes, you can do it with a snap hand. So don't worry about that. Okay. All right, watch this center right here from the Bengals. All right, he may move laterally a little bit, but that left foot, really, when he makes contact, doesn't drop, doesn't cross the line. So he may not be a pure up kick, but at least he's parallel and he's proactive with that outside hand. Left, then right. Okay, here's the Kansas City center. Okay, he kind of foot fires first and then his left foot really is either parallel or almost forward. Okay. So he's not dropping and using the old kick slide where you turn your shoulders. Pretty good. And then this last one is the Ram Center. Okay, not using necessarily an up kick, but using the outside hand. Now watch him right there. Watch him torque the guy. You know what I'm talking about? Torquing the opposite hand. He pulls the left arm off. And he throws him with the right hand. So basically, you should torque on all your finishes, pass or run. See him throw the guy? He probably throws him four to five yards sideways. Watch 62 use the up kick with the outside hand and the outside foot going forward. Okay? Watch him. Watch how fast you get on the guy. It's called an up kick with an outside pillar. Okay. Let's watch him here. Right guard. Boom. Same thing. Outside hand high. Inside hand a low lift. Step forward. If the guy's wider, foot fire first. Okay. Watch him here. He switches a stunt. Up kick, outside foot, outside hand. Second hand is a clamp, and then he switches the stunt. Unbelievable. Okay, watch him here. Boom, stones the guy, up kick. Okay, watch him here. He gets on the guy before the guy can even get out of his stance. Look at the outside hand, boom. Look at the second hand come as a clamp in case he goes inside. Okay, good stuff. Up kick. Here's picking up the TE on a tight zone. Okay, watch the center. If he uses the square shuffle, not turning his pads, he'll run right into that twisting end. See the twisting end? And the center's got to try to stop him with his shoulders square. Don't try to overturn him. Okay? All right. Same thing. 49ers. All right. Center moves to his left. If a guy crosses your face, let him go. The backside guard gets him. Center's got to pick up that twisting end on a TE because the backside guard is coming to work with the center. Okay. Here's the center. Okay. C54 twist in there. The center's got to use a square shuffle with his shoulder square to get his linebacker. He can't just drive into that guy. He's got to stick a hand out 
and then he's got to stop the twisting end because it's an inside zone. That's the center's man. Okay. There it is again. The center has to protect his front side gap. I don't care where his responsibility is. Okay. Here we go. Last one. There's a TE. Okay. I'm not talking about 26. I'm talking about 56. That's the center's man keeping his shoulders square. Matt, that was a good punch. But what he did at right tackle, he opened up like this and his second step came like this and he turned and he punched that hand. Okay, watch me. Let's say I'm taking angle B. Okay, let's say I'm taking angle A. Look at this angle, look, look, look. Okay, watch my right foot. See, pigeon toe, watch my right arm. Okay, now let's say I'm angle B, about the angle he took, all right? Pigeon toe that foot to keep my shoulder square. Punch that arm. Second step comes like this. Boom, 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 boom. So it would look like boom, 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 boom. Okay, he's turning. He goes boom, boom. He sloops on his second step. Don't do that. You'll always turn. Keep your shoulders totally square. Even if I was on the deeper angle, angle C, vertical setting, pump this arm and make the second step come like this, this, not like that, that. No, it's not good. The punch is beautiful. The takeoff, no, no. You should have learned more from me. <laughs> okay, this is brace, stomp, and dip. This is where you brace one foot, then the other foot goes up and down. It just doesn't drop the knee and lunge. So it's like you drop one foot, you're lunging forward, and the second step comes up and down, but it doesn't go forward. So let's watch these centers here. Or this center here, okay, here we go. All right, okay. See the left foot brace, see the right foot kind of just drop, okay? Or what I call stomp. He just stomps it into the ground. Then he uncoils and lunges. Look at that movement on a double team. Of course, there's a little help by the guard, okay? Uh, Okay, let's watch this center here now, okay? Okay, he drops the left foot, and then the right foot just goes up and down, okay? All right. Let's go to this next one here, okay? Let's see this center here, okay? Okay, see the left foot go up and down? Okay. Okay, let's get some guards. All right. All right, here we go. Got to download a little bit. Okay, let's show you what we got here now. Probably the right guard, okay? Okay. He just drops his right foot, and then the left foot just kind of stops. That's not a great example. All right. All right. The left guard drops his left foot and the right foot just stomps up and down. Hard to see that one. Let's get a good one from behind. Here's probably a great one, okay? Watch the right guard, okay? Brace, stomp. Where the earlier videos were just brace and dip. Okay, let's not even look at the feet. Let's just look at the proactivity of using the outside hand, okay? Here we go. All right. There's the right guard. Don't watch his feet, okay? Just watch the right hand, boom, one, two.
Just watch the hand. Boom. Okay. Okay, so the guy's to his inside. He drops his post foot and he uses the outside hand. His inside hand is low, so he doesn't get it knocked down. Outside hand, strongest hand, nearest hand. Don't use the inside hand because they'll knock it down. Okay, here we go. Here's the right guard, I believe. Watch him. He uses the outside hand when the guy's in a one. He drops his post, and then he recovers. Okay. All right. Right guard. Okay. Watch him foot fire, kind of drop his inside foot. First contacts with the outside hand so he doesn't get the inside hand knocked down. But he foot fired. All of these are up kicks, okay? It's all the right guard. I think the fifth one is the center. So let's go, here we go. Okay. See the right foot ahead of the left foot? Okay. All right. See him reach with the right foot and the right hand. Those are the two closest things to the guy. Okay. Right guard. He's got some center help. Okay, right guard. There's a perfect one, watch it. He moves laterally because the guy's wide and he strikes with the outside hand and the outside foot's going forward. Clinic. Okay, this would be the center. Stepping forward with his left foot and using his left hand. Up kick. Look at that. Look how he stalemates the guy. Right guard. Okay. So he foot fires laterally. Okay. And then he steps forward and he uses the outside hand. Right guard. Okay. Now he uses two hands, but I would favor just using the outside hand. Then the inside hand lifts. Okay, right guard. Okay, foot fire. Outside hand strike. Inside hand clamp. Right guard. There it is. See how he leans into it with the outside hand? He moves laterally because the guy's wide. Then he lands the outside punch. Then the inside hand comes second. 